Good day and welcome to another edition of Cobicypher's Coding Lessons. In this lesson, we will build a password generator application using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so if you are ready, let's get started. As you can see, I have already gone ahead to build the UI of our application. Let me remind you that focus over here is on JavaScript. And so let me walk you through the code responsible for the UI. This is for the HTML. I have linked my style sheet and my scripts file in the HTML file. And this is for the CSS. If you wish to have a similar UI, I advise that you pause the video or you adjust the speed of the video and type the code. With that said, now let's move on to the main focus of the video. To begin with, we define four constant variables that can be used to store possible characters, which can be used in the generated password. And so we have lowercase letters, which will contain all lowercase letters from A to Z. We then have uppercase letters. Of course, it also contain all uppercase letters from A to Z. We have numbers containing all numeric digits from zero to nine. We also have symbols, which will contain a set of special symbols often used in passwords. We then add other variables that will help us capture references to elements in the HTML document using the document.getElementById method. We have the password EL, which is an input for where the generated password will be displayed. We also have generate BTN, which is a button for generating the password. And so we have the length EL, EL for element. That will be an input field for specifying the length of the password. Lowercase EL. Uppercase EL. Numbers EL. And symbols here. These are checkboxes for selecting whether to include lowercase letters, uppercase letters, numbers, and symbols, respectively. Now we have to define the generate password function. We will add an event listener to the generate BTN button. This way, when it is clicked, it will trigger the generate password function. This function will help us to retrieve the desired length of the password, of course, from the length input field, and then convert it to an integer using the passInt method. 
It will also initialize an empty string called characters. This will help us to store the characters that will be used to generate the password. We will also check each checkbox. That's the lowercase EL, the uppercase EL, the numbers EL, the symbols EL, to determine which type of character should be included in the password. What will happen, as we will see later, is that if a checkbox is checked, the corresponding set of characters is appended to the character string. We can now call the create random password function with the character string and the specified length as argument, and then assign the generated password to the password EL input field. Finally, we have to define the create random password function. It will help us to generate a random password based on the given set of characters and the desired length. This function will iterate length times, each time randomly selecting a character from the character string and appending it to the password variable. And then, of course, the generated password is returned. Now it's time for testing. Let's move to the web browser and test it out. Nothing happened after clicking the generate password button. There seemed to be a bug in our code. Let's go fish it out. I see where the issue is. It's supposed to be number, not numbers. Let's change it. Now we test again. We refresh the page, click on generate password, and there you have it. It's working. You can check and uncheck any of the checkboxes, increase or decrease the number, and generate a new password. That will also work. What our application is doing is that it provides a user interface for generating passwords with customable options for length and character types. And then it dynamically updates the displayed password whenever the user clicks the Generate Password button. That will be all for this lesson. Until next time, stay safe.